Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. Ready to go? I hit record, didn't I? Fair enough. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. This is Ryan. This is Jake. And this is our Bonds K review episode for the Aki Basho. The, this was a hotly anticipated Bonds K up until about an hour before it came out. And then I was getting very, very nervous that I was going to be very, very wrong about a lot, a lot of things. And so I, I was legit like feeling a lot of anxiety before it came out. And rightly so, because <laughs> there was a lot of things that happened that I did not predict for. Uh, but ultimately, the what made me feel better was looking at guess the bonds K and the results there. Uh, and it wasn't an absolute disaster. So I'm going to take that as a win. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I I'm guessing that it was an absolute disaster, but for everyone. Precisely. Yeah. 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 Okay. Good. All right. Good. I'm just making sure I understand. Mm-hmm. So before we dive in to what happened with this Bonds K and all the COVID Q Joe madness, uh, let's get a voicemail from Biff, who I think properly summed up uh, what this Bonds K did to everybody that tried <laughs> yeah. to put it together. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Dude, Sasha Booty, Biff here. Man, just listen to that Bonzuke prediction, and my fucking brain hurts. I, it, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyways, my hot pick for the next Basho is Shodai for the U Show. It's going to surprise a lot of people, and yeah, you can make fun of me. That's okay. Anyways, I'm in Kai late. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to break down in that short clip. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Primarily the Shodai pick and also yeah. the the whole I'm in tie late. Yeah. I think that's how I'm going to leave every room from now on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in tie late. <laughs> no, the Shodai pick's absolutely ridiculous. He's not Kato Bond, so he's not going to try hard. That's so ridiculous. But we're not here to talk about that. Absurd. We're here to talk Absurd. about Bonds K. And it, it also melted my brain, Biff. <laughs> uh, one thing real quick, uh, we're, we're back to our old-fashioned, like, no graphics version of this, because I had to get my carpets cleaned, uh, and that meant I had to move all my furniture and unplug and replug all of my cords and stuff, so now my cool OBS graphics don't work. So, tough, I guess. Let's, let's no, not... no cool graphics or anything today. We're not going to let you play victim here, Jake. I had to get my carpets cleaned. You I'm chose suffering. to get your carpets cleaned. I'm suffering here. Okay. This was a decision that you made, and it affected the podcast in an adverse way, and I expect some recompense from you. Okay. I actually do have something for you. Ooh. So uh, Ryan was talking some mad trash about our listeners before we started recording, <laughs> and I, I realized that we didn't have a good name for our listeners. Ooh. Like what what do you call somebody who listens to Grand Sumo Breakdown? Uh, like Ryan Ryan was really pushing for the idea of sumo morons. Um and I'm I mean I don't I'm not quite as cynical as Ryan. So I I have a couple other uh a couple others that we can debate over the course of the episode here, okay? Sure. I like so, it. I so, I still say sumo morons is a fantastic thing. Uh it's, it's a nice little bad. port it's a nice portmanteau and it aptly describes all the fans that try to correct me on Twitter about my Bonscape predictions. Yeah. So <laughs> so somebody who listens to Grand Sumo Breakdown. Yeah, actually sumo morons is kind of growing on me. Uh, I mean, it's been a long time and you're <laughs> Did still I already listening. win the debate? You might have already. Uh but I'm thinking the Grand Sumo Breakiax. Ooh, that's something. That's sumo. the Grand Sumo Break Dudes. What about <laughs> what about the Grand Sumo Break Crowd? Uh, and, and I mean, this is all kind of academic because the best one that I came up with was the GS Peeps, and it's got to be that. It's it's yeah. got to be that, right? That I, that's the front runner for me. The other one that I was thinking of would be the Grand Sumo Brood. Okay. Get the GS. You still got the GSB in there? Sure. Sure. But GS Peeps is, yeah, easily the best. I think we need a Twitter poll after this episode goes up. It's more important than anything we're going to talk about today. So obviously, yeah. So I, I'm all for that. Let, but let's let's, let's in, get though. to yeah. the bonds. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's get there. Uh, <laughs> That's it's enough the, jibber jabber. It's the title of the episode. So hypothetically, it's what they clicked to hear. Uh, <laughs> Those sumorons. <laughs> 
that's probably that's actually what instead of like the GSB crew, which is what we call ourselves, we should be the Sue morons and they're the GSP. Mm, OK, OK. That probably works a little bit better. All right. So based on the results of this Bonske, we had made like a lot of assumptions for how the Bonske committee was going to handle the guys that were pulled out before they had eight wins and eight losses, how they were going to handle the guys that were pulled out after they had eight wins or eight losses. Uh, it was an unprecedented thing. We didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know if they were going to project forward these guys' record based on like the win percentage that they had, maybe just assume like a 50-50 wins. How were they going to handle the – were they going to freeze guys that didn't get eight wins or eight losses, or were they – promote and demote them based on their record when they were pulled out and all we got before the bonds was released is they're going to do what was fair and so now we're going to find out what fair means to the bonds committee and it means that if you did not get to eight wins or eight losses your rank was frozen so that means koto nawaka who had a seven and three record before being pulled out uh, is still Maegashira to West, despite his amazing record, despite him being in the Yusho race when he was pulled out, he will not get any sort of promotion. Uh, the Fusen losses that they had were counted as losses against them ba based on some things that happened in the order they ended up in. I'm pretty sure the Fusen losses were counted against these Rikshi. Um, if you did get to eight wins, the remainder of your matches were treated as losses. And conversely, if you did get to eight losses, the remainder of your matches were treated as wins for your placement on the bonds. K. Um, so just at that, I came up with those rules, just kind of looking at it briefly. And so I actually created another bonds K prediction after this bonds K was released to test whether these uh, assumptions were accurate, just basically if I knew this is how they were going to treat it, would things kind of end up how the bonds K committee placed them. And once I did that exercise, it confirmed to me that that those rules that I described, that is how the committee treated these Rikshi. I don't think that how they did it was necessarily the most fair way that it could have been done. I E Koto Nawake, Ichi Yamamoto, but ultimately it does make a lot of sense to me and I'm not overly upset about it. They don't have to make projections for Rikshi that didn't get eight wins or eight losses and say, yeah, I think you probably would have won one more match or lost all these matches. And they minimized the promotions slash demotions for those that did pull out after getting eight wins or eight losses uh so sure there were some guys that were trending towards great records that got the shaft but on the other side of that coin guys trending towards bad records were kind of cushioned in their fall down the bonds k so between those two groups of people it kind of evens out so i guess that could be considered fair overall on the balance of the rickshi maybe not to each individual rickshi but overall it balances to something you could call fair. I guess that makes sense. It yeah. was really frustrating waiting for like a month and a half with just we'll be fair, you know. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, I, I mean I, I'm not sure what the better way would have been, but yeah, it was it was frustrating sitting there like having no idea what was even the criteria, you know. Yeah. So absolutely. And now no we way. know in case so God forbid something like this happens again in Aki. We know how they're going to deal with it. So people, the few people in the world that kind of put some pride on the line and guessing the bonds case, we're going to have a little bit of uh, guidance on how to handle these people next time. And hopefully there never is a next time. Yeah. But for what it's worth, there will forever be a 30 page appendix in Ryan's tome of bonds K guessing. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's going to be a new probably a brand new chapter in the back of the book to describe what will happen in case somebody is pulled out due to some medical emergency worldwide that forces uh, them to go out against their will. Hmm. So let's go through the ranking, shall we? Because there are some surprises that not a lot of people saw coming. So uh, Yokozuna, there are no surprises there. Uh, it's Terano Fuji. Nobody got the, nobody got the promotion in between. Nope. No, no, okay. Nobody got promoted. Uh, at Ozeki 1 on the east side, we have Takakesho. On the west side, we have Shodai. And we do have Mitaki Yumi at Ozeki 2 west remaining in the Ozeki rank. This is what we all assumed uh, since he didn't get eight wins or eight losses on the dojo. 
it has not been confirmed whether he is still Kadoban and needs to get his eight or more wins uh, in Aki to remain Ozeki for the Kyushu Basho in November. But I'm fairly positive that's the case. I don't yeah. think they really need to come out and announce it. I think that's just assumed. Yeah, he still needs to get his eight wins. The The fact that he is still ranked Ozeki proves that they didn't count it as an actual losing record. So yeah. I'm guessing, like you like you said before, and you can't count it as a winning record. So yeah, definitely. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's it, it seems like he would be like a an absolute by the book case for a rank freeze type thing. Ooh, I should so. do some research and see if he is the first Ozeki to have competed in two straight Bashos, get a losing <laughs> record in two straight Bashos, and remain Ozeki. Because they had the Kosho Sato system where you could sit out a Basho and maintain your rank. So there are some Ozeki who could have back-to-back -back losing records. One of them, they were fully Kyujo. I wonder if this is the first time that an Ozeki was not fully Kyujo for an mm. entire Basho for a two Basho stretch and still kept the rank of Ozeki. Do you have a, a, a rough idea of what time frame that system was in place? I don't remember. 70s off the top to early 2000s. Ish, or it could have been before the seventies, but I know it ended around early two thousands ish. Okay, just just curious for a you know point of reference. Yeah, uh, and then just the order of the Ozeki is based on their record. Takakesho had the best record, then Shodai, then Mitakiyumi, so that's the order they appear on the bonds. K. We go to Sekiwake. No surprise, Wakatakakage. He's going to be entering his fourth consecutive Basho as Sekiwake East. He has gotten three straight winning records as Sekiwake. But then we get to Sekiwake West, and we have our first surprise, at least for me. I have seen some people coming out of the woodwork saying, yeah, I had Hoshoryu as a Sekiwake on this Bonske. Um, it, the extra, so spoiler. Daisho is also a Sekiwake. He is Sekiwake 2 East. So we have three Sekiwake, and a lot of people thought, okay, maybe we might have three Sekiwake. Ichinojo had a 12-3 and record from Maegashira 2. He deserves to be Sekiwake instead of Komosubi. That was not the case. Um, so I think what happened, I don't think they gave it to Hoshoryu because he had a winning record at Komosubi, and they just like, oh, no, you've done good enough. You should be Sekiwake. I think what happened is that Daisho needed to hold his Sekiwake rank because he was pulled out before he had earned eight wins or eight losses. Yeah, he was um, six and six in the ring when he pulled out. Yeah. So to me knowing they were probably going to keep Daisho there. That meant both Sekiwake slots were accounted for between Wakataka Kage having a winning record and staying up there and Daisho being pulled out and them not wanting to demote him. Sure. But the Bonds K committee, I believe, looked at it a little differently. So Daisho was six and seven, if you count that Fusen loss, and he could have easily dropped from the Sekiwake rank if he had kept competing. Um, we don't know that. So Hoshoryu, with Hoshoryu's winning record from Komosubi East, if Daisho did end up with a losing record, which we'll never know, uh, Hoshoryu would have been the guy to ascend and take his spot. So instead of having an absent Daisho block Hoshoryu from the Sekiwake rank that he otherwise earned based on his 9-6 and six record, they promoted Hoshoryu to Sekiwake uh, 1 West and created the extra spot to keep Daisho at Sekiwake. So really, the extra slot wasn't created for Hoshoryu at all. It was created to prevent an unfair drop for Daisho. Uh, and I'm pretty sure we could say this confidently because it is Daisho that is Sekiwake 2 and not Hoshoryu. So Daisho is the one that created that extra slot. Looking to the future... I don't think we can expect another nine and six record from a Komosubi East to be good enough to force open a third Sekiwake slot. I chalk this completely up to COVID weirdness. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if somebody got like 15 and 0 from Komosubi and both Sekiwake's got eight and seven, they'd open up a slot for that guy. Yeah. But if the same thing happened and the Komosubi only got nine and six in the next Basho, you would not necessarily expect there to be an extra Sekiwake. You'd expect it to just be like, well, too bad. Both Sekiwakes yeah. are stand put. We, we've seen that happen plenty of times sure. in the past, which is why not many people predicted Hoshoryu to go here. Uh, mm -hmm. I do think it is solely because of COVID weirdness. And, uh, and one one other thing that, it, it, well, I mean, we'll probably get there because we're about to talk about Komasubis, but it, it seems really strange to me. And I, I hope you have a little bit more info on what's going on here, maybe. But like, 
why did they create one extra Sekiwake and one extra Komasubi rather than two of one or something? I, I don't know. Is that something that you so looked into at all? They they needed to create that extra Sekiwake if they wanted to kind of like be fair to Hoshoryu, not have him blocked by an absent Daisho who could have had a losing record. So they needed to create that extra slot for Daisho. And since it was created for Daisho, it needed to be an extra Sekiwake slot. And then I think the precedent was set uh, when Daisho got the 13 and 2 record for Maigashira 1 back in January of 2021, and he was only promoted up to Komosubi. Ichinojo had a worse record from a lower rank, so I don't think you could uh... rightly expect him to create a Sekiwake slot. The The precedent wasn't there for that. Um, and then also with uh, Kiribayama, who did actually force open a third Seki or Komosubi slot. He had an eight and seven record for Magashir one East. You're not going to open up a Sekiwake slot for that guy. You only open up a uh, Komosubi slot for him. If the other Komosubi slots are already spoken for. So I just right, don't think, it. yeah, you could make an argument that Ichinojo could have been a fourth Sekiwake and then just have Abi and Kiribayama as your Komosubi. But I think they set the precedent with Daisho, and it's probably more money paid to Sekiwake, and so they don't want to pay for it. <laughs> it's easier to pay three Sekiwake and three Komosubi than four Sekiwake and two Komosubi. I assume. Well, I don't Ichi know how Nojo's the pay scale already works. Been, Ichi Nojo's already been Sekiwake in the past, so I wonder if that's a... I don't know. I I would love, and, and this, this is something that we've talked about a couple times, but I would love to do like a full breakdown on the pay scale. Uh, just because it's more out of curiosity than out of like budgeting, but you know what I mean. It, it would yeah. be fun to fun to look into. We should talk to big GS peep, uh, uh, Kisei Nosato, uh, and have him <laughs> friend of the show. Yeah, have him leak the uh, JSA pay scale to us so we know how mm -hmm. that all works. If it's not already public knowledge and people can let just me shoot him a text. Anyway. I bet I'll yeah. hear back before we're done oh, recording. Obviously, yeah. All right. Let, let's go down to that Komosubi rank real quick. So with Hoshoryu rising up to Sekiwake, that means that Abi will slide from the West Komosubi rank to the East Komosubi rank after his 8-7 and seven record. And then Ichinojo doesn't need to create a new uh, Sekiwake or Komosubi rank. He's just going to fill up that empty Komosubi West rank that Abi vacated after his 12-3 and three record, his 12-3 and three Yusho from Maigashira 2. And then we do get to Komosubi 2 West uh, that we got confirmation. An 8-7 and seven record for Maigashira 1 East is indeed good enough to force open a new Komosubi rank as Kiribayama did just that. And will he's rising in the numbered ranks from Maigashira 1 to Komosubi, but I think there's actually more people ahead of him in the order this time yeah. than there were last time. There so, are two more Sanyaku slots than there were last time, and he has only moved up one slot. Yeah. So he's actually moved backward one slot. <laughs> yeah. So depending on how you look at it, Kiribayama actually got demoted after an 8-7 and seven record. Hooray? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there's really no way around it, mm -hmm. honestly. I'm, I'm not mad about it. I I'm, I'm sorry. There, there's one thing that's been bugging me here. Mm. You 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 said GS Peep, uh, Kisano Sato. Yes. Can you use Peeps, like my Peeps, as a singular? I can eat a singular Peep on Easter. That so is yes. a marshmallow. That is not a human being. <laughs> that is different. I I never said what I was talking about. <laughs> that's that's left open to for interpretation. Okay. What. <laughs> No, it, let's let's not let's close that down. I, it was I I'm was speaking about marshmallows. The, the the discomfort this gives me is similar to a completely relevant anecdote um, that I have for you. <laughs> so, I, I I misspoke the other day when I was talking about uh, 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 bathroom supplies that we needed. I need the stuff for the the for the the brush. Uh, toothpaste. Teeth paste is what my brain said. <laughs> And immediately I was like, that is viscerally wrong. I don't, I know it's just the plural of tooth and toothpaste is correct, but teeth paste is like just nails on chalkboard to me. But in a more real sense, isn't teeth paste more accurate? A hundred percent. Same with teeth brush. And yet for some reason I clench every time I say that out loud. And hopefully a lot of the GS peeps out there are clenching as well. <laughs> Each individual GS peep, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's the kind of like weird, like cringy reaction I got when you said 
uh, as a singular. Yeah. I don't want you to ever do it again. I will try my best, but absolutely no promises. It's going to happen again. I'm not surprised that you would not promise that. Yeah. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> uh, so we did have a couple people on. I, I got to say, overall, very happy with the response I got on Twitter for my Bonds K prediction. I I beseeched the GS peeps. It, <laughs> I, I, it's just sticking for me. It's much I, better when you say it plural. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I beseeched everybody listening to the Bonds K episodes, like, don't don't come at me about like these uh the predictions based on people that were pulled out due to COVID. Nobody knows. Don't don't come at me. My brain already hurts so much. I've gone through throw mu- <laughs> gone through so much pain trying to figure this out and do something that's I've, I've gonna be somewhat before. accurate. Yeah. Don't just don't. I don't want to have this argument. And for the most part, I'd say people did a very good job about that. And so I will thank them. But there were a couple people that came <laughs> at me about Kiti Bayama being promoted to Komosubi. They just didn't see it happening. An 8-7 record deserving to uh, force open another Komosubi slot. And also their argument was, well, if you leave Kiti Bayama as Maigashira 1, the rest of the Bonske kind of works a lot better. Um, mm. To which I responded, doesn't matter. Too I don't bad. think the Bonske. Yeah, yeah, I don't think the Bonske committee cares on if it makes the rest of the Bonske easier to fill out or not, which obviously they didn't because they promoted him. Uh, so specifically, I have to point out uh, RK 1999. They were one of the people who said that they, they thought Kiribayama, uh would not be Komosubi. Uh, but th- we've got a we've got a problematic <laughs> GS peep, Jake. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Asset. Um, they were the one who uh referred to you as Bonske Daddy on the previous Bonske review uh when not they my, got something wrong moment. about the prediction. And this time they, they said Kitty Bayama was not gonna get a Komosubi slot. And they said if they were wrong, that they they would be Ryan's fur kitten. And I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> That's simultaneously accurate and also a teeth paste moment. <laughs> because, like, yeah, it's a kitten. What I mean, there, unless it's a sphinx kitten, like there's no other kind of kitten, right? Yeah, unless it's one of those hairless yeah. kittens. But it, it makes me feel weird. Um, I, I don't, don't like wa- saying it. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to encourage that behavior, but by broadcasting <laughs> it, I kind of am. Uh, yeah. So there's that. Um, just no <laughs> asset. I see you and you make me feel weird things. <laughs> uh, what a, what what an interesting GS peep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nope. No better when I said it myself. No, nope. <laughs> it's, it's not like nails on the chalkboard in that sense where it's less bad when you say it yourself. People yeah. are going to either really like GS peeps and GS peep. <laughs> Or they're going to absolutely hate it by the end of the episode. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe let's, maybe let's singular, let's cool off on it. Let, let people kind of warm up to it before we just absolutely douse them. Before we like GS creep it back in. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) All right. All right. Let's move on. Oh Uh, no. (laughs) What have I done? (laughs) Nothing good. No. Let's talk about Maigashiro 1. And at Maigashiro 1 Are we East, only at Maigashiro 1? It's been yeah, 20 minutes, damn it. It's not going to go any faster. We've got a lot of stuff to unpack with this some bitch. Uh, <laughs> all right. Okay. I'm ready. Yeah. So Maigashiro 1 East, we have Toby Zaru getting a five rank promotion after his 8 and 7 with an asterisk record. I say 8 and 7. He had eight wins by the time he was pulled out basically treating them as if each absence was a loss. So eight and seven effective record for Toby Zaru. And he jumps to a career high rank of Maigashira one. Um, it honestly, for Toby Zaru, it didn't matter how the Bonske committee treated his record. They could have assumed all absences were wins and he would have ended up in the same spot. There was nobody that was challenging him for the top Maigashira spot, unless you wanted to pro- promote coach on which I did. Um, Cause <laughs> They Which said they I were going <laughs> because they said they were going to be fair, and that just seemed fair to me. <laughs> um, because yeah, Toby Zaro had to go here because after Ichi Nojo, who we've already placed, who was at Maigashira 2, there were only three Rikshi that had winning records from the ranks of Maigashira 3 to Maigashira 10, so very slim pickings, very yeah. And then we get to Maigashira 1 West, and oh, by the way, Toby's our luck of the bounce cake candidate, uh, five rank promotion after eight and seven. 
look still of the bots nuts. Guy. Regardless of context, that's still yeah. nuts. Yeah. I I'm gonna make this next guy a luck of the bonds cake candidate as well, although I don't know whether he really is lucky or not. But either way, the Dori Fuji at Maigashira One West is getting a 10 rank promotion after a 10 and 5 record from Maigashira eleven. So wow. we will see how the little guy does in his first full Sanyaku Basho. This is going to be a big test for a guy whose previous career high was my at 10. Um, I don't expect good things. <laughs> it it might be a brutal ass kick of the bonds candidate or something, but yeah. you know, it, as, as far as ranks go, it's absolutely very lucky. lucky. Yeah, absolutely exactly. lucky. Yeah. <laughs> So we'll get to Maigashira 2, where Maigashira 2 East, we do have Koto Nawaka. He is absolutely a snub of the Bonds K candidate for all the reasons we discussed before. And on the west side of the Maigashira 2 rank, we're going to have Meisei. He's going to be our third luck of the Bonds K candidate out of our first four, Maigashira Rikshi. Oh my he, God. He's yeah. another extremely fortunate guy. He gets an eight rank promotion after a nine and six record from Maigashira 10. So... Unlike Midori Fuji, we know that Meisei can hang in this range, so not a terrible thing for him, just kind of a expedited boost up to the top of the Bonske after he had that, what was it, a 1-14 in 14 record, I think, a oh, couple God, of Basho yeah, ago. Uh, catastrophe, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Maigashira 3 on the east side. So we have Tamawashi, and he's staying there from his previous... Uh, rank on the previous Basho. No movement for Tamawashi. I don't know if they left him here because he didn't get eight losses on the Doyo. He was five and seven when he pulled out. His eighth loss would have been his Fusen loss. Um, or if they treated him as we mentioned, like he didn't earn eight losses or eight wins on the Doyo, so they're not going to move him. I tend to believe that it was um that his Fusen loss was counted. So they counted him as like five and eight when he pulled out and then treated the rest of his absences as wins, giving him an effective seven and eight record. I believe this based on how Tsurugisho is treated later on down the Bonds case. So we'll get to that. Either way, would have resulted in the same thing. Tamawashi keeping his spot on the Bonds K. Um but I think it is interesting to bring up like why did they keep him there and like i said i think it's because they counted that fusen loss yeah um, that, that would make sense how many of these cases do you have where it was somebody that was like right at seven when they got pulled out yeah uh tamawashi and suduki show are the oh, only two okay i got you just the two of them yep uh ura got his seven and eight record the old-fashioned way by competing in all 15 days uh and so Atta he's boy. gonna yep <laughs> so he's gonna keep his spot on the bonds K to prevent any further massive over promotions and under demotions well not prevent them just help mitigate step, help mitigate a little bit because they're still coming um <laughs> yeah so at Maigashira 4 on the east side, we have Nishkigi. Uh, this one surprised me because uh, I basically I thought Nishkigi and Meisei were going to swap places. Um, and how they ranked Nishkigi, this is one of the reasons why I thought, okay, they treated all of these guys' absences as losses if you got eight wins on the Dohyo before you pulled out. Uh, because his ranking only makes sense if you – look at him as an eight and seven Rikshi. If you assumed even one more win for Nishkigi, he would deserve to be ahead of both Midori Fuji and Meisei. Uh, so the only way that it really makes sense how they ranked him was uh, looking at him as an eight and seven Rikshi. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yep. And then Takayasu gets the old classic COVID treatment, full Basho, full Basho missed, no change in rank. We knew how that worked. That guy Nailed right it. There. Towel on the wall. Also right there. There it is. Yeah. Tegata on the wall. Yeah. Do you have two Tegata of him now? Uh, No. Well, um, no, because I gave you the replica. That's right. And Is and it this, the this red one's, one? This one's that's legit. That's okay. Takiyasu. Oh, my gosh. I am mirrored on my screen when I'm not used to it. <laughs> and this one is Ishiura. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, thanks to um friend of the show and GS Peep, John Gunning, who yes. helped us out with <laughs> some merch. <laughs> yeah. Also enemy of the show. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, friend and foe of the show. Yeah. Ooh, foe of the show. That's kind of nice. Ooh, that is nice. Well, let's All work right. with that. Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Maigashira 5 on the east side, we have Takuro Fuji. And 
This is honestly the most head scratching one on the entire Bonds K for me. Um, I just don't understand how this worked up to this point. Everyone had been placed according to the typical math. Uh, the guy who had who deserved to go ahead of other guys went ahead of the other guys. But Takuro Fuji breaks that trend as he's getting a seven rank promotion after a nine and six record for Magashir 12. The overly large promotion for the nine and six record is not strange at all in this Bonske. Like we said, Mesei had an eight rank promotion for a nine and six record. Um, what this is, Bonske, yeah, exactly. Yeah. What is strange is that Takuro Fuji jumped Wakamoto Haru to get to the Maegashira 5 rank. On my prediction, I had Wakamoto Haru dropping from Maegashira 4 to Maegashira 5 after a 6-9 and nine record, just a one-rank drop after a 6-9 and nine record. Um, and not only did Takuro Fuji jump over Wakamoto Haru, Wakamoto Haru deserved to be two ranks ahead of Takuro Fuji. So they kind of went against where these guys deserve to be ranked by the typical math to put Takuro Fuji ahead of Wakamoto Haru. Hmm. So... Yeah, sure, Wakamoto Haru would have only dropped one rank after a 6-9 and nine record for Magashira 4, which isn't very common, but we've seen it happen. Well, it's um, not that crazy. And you know what? We're going to see it, I think, two or three times on this Bonske with <laughs> other Rikshi. Okay. So I the reasoning for Takuro Fuji being up this high absolutely eludes me. Uh, in my mind, he should be Magashira 6 behind Wakamoto Haru. Makes no sense to me. We'll write a letter, as yeah. we often do. Yeah, JSA West, we have to, or yeah, JSA West, we have to let our opinion known uh, and brought into account for when they do these things in the future. We have a seat at the table, I think. assume. Obviously, yeah, they they get our letters. They have to. I would think so. Yeah. Uh, Magashir 5 West, Sada no Umi, this rank makes complete sense. 7 and 8 record, stays <laughs> put, prevent further over promotions under demotions. Easiest thing to do in this part of the when you have a bond skate like this rubber stamp it. Yep. Magashira six on the East side. This is where we get Wakamoto Haru uh, dropping two ranks to Magashira six East after his six and nine record. Uh, absolutely wrong on every level justice for Wakamoto Haru. Yep. Um, on the West side, we have Endo who I am making a luck of the bond skate candidate. Oh, also Takuro Fuji is a luck of the bond skate candidate. I thought about making Wakamoto Haru a snub of the bond skate candidate. And he probably hell. Let's do it. Let's add him as a snub of the bonds cake candidate. <laughs> I mean, it's it's your award. You do what you want. <laughs> Ultimately, it was like ah, eh, he only got a two rank demotion for a six and nine record. Ultimately, not that bad. But you know what? I'm angry enough about Takara Fuji. I'm making him a snub of the bonds cake candidate. But let's get back to Endo. So at Mikeshiro Six show, West, you can do what you want. You heard it. He said my show. Um, <laughs> at Mikeshiro Six West, we have Endo. Eh, the the when, pronoun your can be plural. The Royal Your. <laughs> what? <laughs> Shut up. What's the next rank? <laughs> the I've been Royal Your. I've, I've been saying it for like the past 30 seconds. Micah Shearer 6 West, Endo. <laughs> he was the guy <laughs> that stood out to me the most when I first saw this Bonske before I really dug into the Takara Fuji Wakamoto Haru scandal, and that really gained my ire. At first, it was Endo. Really baked your beans. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the reason he caught my eye is because he got a total of three wins from the rank of Maegashira 5. Jake, what rank is Endo right now? Maegashira 6? Yeah. He had Wait. three wins on the doyo. Wait. It, it, uh, <laughs> How does that happen, you ask? You're confused. I sounds. Ask. Yeah, I, I literally actually this one time do <laughs> ask what you are telling me to. So this is where my theory of if you had at least eight losses before pulling out, your absences were treated as wins. If you look at it that way, his his ranking makes a lot more sense. Not complete sense, mind you, <laughs> but slightly but, more, but a lot more sense. So Endo pulled out with a three and ten record. If you include the Fusen loss, which would give him an effective record of five and ten, awarding him wins for his absences. So if we treat him as a five and ten Rikshi, as opposed to like a four and 11 Rikshi or something like that. He would be tied with Onosho for who would deserve to be placed on the Bonske at the Magashira six West spot. Assuming we don't want to demote Aoyama only a half rank. And if we're not going to give Wakamoto Haru a one rank demotion, we're certainly not going to give Aoyama a half rank demotion. So oh, get him out of there. So <laughs> putting Endo here makes some sense based on how they place Takara Fuji. 
probably would have assumed Onosho would have gone ahead of Endo because you had the lower ranked guy with double digit wins jumping ahead of the guy with a six and nine record. Um, also, if he was at five and ten and ranked Maegashira five, and Aoyama was six and nine at Maegashira six, you would expect Aoyama to be ranked ahead of Endo. That's kind of what you see. If somebody is one rank ahead of a guy and has one more loss, they're typically behind that guy on the next Bonds game, but that's not the case this time. Endo's rank makes 100% uh, sense if we treat his Fusen uh, absence as, if we don't treat his Fusen absence as a loss. We just, okay, he was three and nine on the Dohyo. Remaining absences becomes wins. Treat him as a six and nine record. Then everything falls into place perfectly for him to land at Maegashira 6 West. But then how they treat Tsudugisho at the bottom of the Bonske wouldn't make as much sense. So what I'm trying to get at is there are some inconsistencies here. <laughs> no matter reminded, how you look at it, I'm reminded it's weird. of John Gunning saying that the people who guess the Bonske put way more thought into it than the people who do it officially. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Hell, it takes me a week to come up with a Bonsuke prediction. They do it in like two days after the Bosch show's over. They haven't thought yeah. about it nearly long enough. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I mean, yes, you you may make the argument that you have a full time job that you're also doing, but really you're just thinking about the Bonsuke. I'm you're also there. a dad, and you will soon find out, Jake. <laughs> it takes a lot of time. I the have... first six months are a breeze when they just sit like a little potato and they can't move. Once I they have are mobile, literally no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Once they're mobile, all bets are off, my friend. <laughs> Good lord! All right, so we we've we've puzzled out how Endo got so lucky with a three win record to only drop one rank, one and a half ranks, Maegashira five East to Maegashira six West. So let's get to Maegashira seven. Awayama drops one rank after a six and nine record from Maegashira six. Why could it Wakamoto Haru? At Maegashira <laughs> seven West. Make sure to hold on to that as deeply yeah. as possible. <laughs> oh, I do. Uh, so, and I would note that Awayama notably lands ahead of Onosho who Onosho is rising eight ranks after a 10 and five record for Magashira 15 to land at Magashira seven West. It's notable to me because Aoyama dropped only one rank after a six and nine record and was placed ahead of a Rikshi rising from the bottom of the Bonske that deserved to be one rank behind Aoyama. But Ryan, you're asking yourself, that <laughs> makes sense. Why is that notable? Because Wakamoto Haru was dropped two ranks when he could have easily dropped only one, and he was dropped in favor of a Rikshi with a nine and six record that deserved to be two ranks below him. Justice for Wakamoto Haru. I'm not going to feed into your complex. Also, I'm saying there's some inconsistencies <laughs> here. <laughs> some things aren't adding up. Everybody should do their own research because... <laughs> There's good guys on both sides. There's good guys on both sides. Everybody should do their own research. <laughs> and if you <laughs> and we're making fun of those people. And if you don't understand it, you're one of those people. All right. <laughs> yeah, if you don't understand that, you probably listen to Alex Jones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get that's enough politics. All right. Magashira eight. <laughs> Referencing Alex Jones as a joke is not a political statement. <laughs> <laughs> Need to make that clear. Very but we fair. can move on. Yep. Magashira <laughs> 8 on the east side. We have Tochi Noshin landing there. He had a 7-8 and eight record. So he's not landing there. He's staying there. He's he's helping us stop those over-promotions and under-demotions. Those dastardly over-promotions and under-demotions. Well, we right. have to stop them at any, <laughs> at any cost. <laughs> Uh, Magashira 8 on the west side. We have Hokuto Fuji dropping only one rank after a 6-9 and nine record from Magashira 7. Once again, wow. <laughs> notably ahead of a Rikshi rising from the bottom of the Bonsuke that deserves to be one rank below him and Wakamoto Haru. Justice for Wakamoto Haru! <laughs> oh, how does it not get any less funny? <laughs> All right. Magashira 9 uh, on the east side. We have Mio Giryu. Um, so you could, we could see at this point, we're starting to get a little bit better with the over promotions, leaving those guys with the seven, eight records have helped. We've gone from an eight ranked promotion for a nine and six record with Mese to just a five rank promotion with a nine and six record for Mio Giryu. We're getting better. Okay. We're not there yet, but it's getting better. <laughs> Justice for Wakamoto Haru. 
Justice. All right. Uh, <laughs> no justice, no peace. <laughs> at Micah Shira nine on the west side, another guy that's that's just pulling his weight to make sure we don't have to over promote or under demote people anymore. Kota Waco with the valiant maneuver of having somebody in his basho pull out for COVID before he was able to attain <laughs> a winning or losing record. So he's keeping his spot on the Bonds K. Again, what a hero. <laughs> <laughs> Lord. <laughs> My gosh, you're 10 on the east side. We have Nishiki Fuji uh rising seven ranks. Uh, after a 10 and five record from my gosh, of 15, this will be just his second Basho in the top division. So this is a career high rank for Makuuchi newcomer Nishiki Fuji. And at my gosh, 10 on the West side, it came down to Takanosho or Ryuden. Uh, remember on my bonds K prediction, I thought, I mean, Ryuden deserves to be five ranks ahead of Takanosho. I don't care if Takanosho was my <laughs> gosh, one. Five ranks is five ranks, and you can't argue with that. Well, apparently you can, make a, can. you can make a very sound argument against it as Takanosho ends up at Maigashira 10 West. Um, I uh, We waffled on this plenty on the Bonds K preview. Ep- I waffled plenty on the Bonds K <laughs> preview episode saying it's, this is probably how it's going to happen, but I've just got to leave it how I've got it. Yeah. Um, should have changed it, but you know what? Whatever. Who cares? Uh, the, we need to remember our original rule for treating Jurio Rikshi, Jake, and that's always be a dick to the Jurio Rikshi. Just, just spite for no reason. Fuck him. That's what <laughs> yeah. I say. Yeah, that's what Ryan says. That's <laughs> it's actually his vanity plate. Yeah. <laughs> Surprised no, I... that one was still available, actually. <laughs> yeah. No, I actually do have a nice vanity plate on my car for my birthday. My wife got me a vanity plate. Oh, what does plate. it say? Like you're the host of GSB or something? Bingo. It says GSB host. So if you're oh, driving sure. around oh, central Iowa, that. yeah, you're driving around central Iowa and you see a uh, car with a Iowa State Cyclone plate that says GSB host, give me a wave and say hi. And then I probably won't respond because I'm driving. I got eyes straight forward. Uh, safe driver always. Wear your seatbelts. Except, except when you're texting. I do not do that. That is against the rules. And I, l- <laughs> based on how I put these bonds K together, you know very well how much I love and hold near and dear to my heart rules. It, that's one of those things where, like, any other person saying it, it would be like, haha, whatever. But, like, when Ryan says, that's against the rules. <laughs> like, literally, I. I'm a project engineer on a job site with just a bunch of career field workers. I'm like an office guy. That's just hanging out in the field for a little bit to get some experience. I'm and like, they're like, Hey, do you want a second cup of coffee? And you're like, ah. Hey, I don't even have a first cup of coffee, water only for this temple. <laughs> good Lord. <laughs> this is a temple. Good, sir. <laughs> it's a, I, it, uh, but they make fun of me for following the rules, you know, <laughs> like with, I'm not going to say anything, get anybody in trouble, but they make fun of me for following the rules. <laughs> because at so least many one of your coworkers listen to your, listen to your show. Right. Our yeah. show, our show. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> uh, all uh, right. I do so many more episodes with all of our stupid interviews and stuff. <laughs> get off my back. You called them stupid. I'm going to tell everybody in amateurs. <laughs> you wouldn't dare. All the GS peeps will know. All the GS peeps. <laughs> You're going to let them down, Jacob. I'm, I'm so sorry, GS peeps. They're wonderful <laughs> interviews. I love doing them. Why am I even saying it like that? That's not even sarcasm. Like, God damn. Ryan. <laughs> oh, this episode is so far off the rails, which this uh, Bonds K deserves, and I love it. Just. Just list the ranks in order as fast as you can. <laughs> no, I put too much work into this to do that. <laughs> uh, I do need to shout out Hank Demon on Twitter. He did correctly call me out by saying Takanosho would be ahead of Ryuden. He said if Takanosho actually ended up as low as I had him, uh, he would cry. Uh, so Hank Demon, save your tears. Takanosho uh, did indeed end up ahead of Ryuden. No, no tears. No tears. Uh, Magashir 11 on the east side, another 
just valiant soldier in the world of Subodum, just sacrificing himself to make sure we didn't over promote or under demote any more people as Koto Shoho pulling out in the middle of the Basho after one of his fellow stable mates got COVID. Just absolute hero. Uh, <laughs> rank, ranks up there with everybody. I don't know where the sentence is going, but he ranks up there. <laughs> kind of kind of lost it halfway through there i think we firmly established that we are both allowed to misspeak thoroughly on this episode (laughs) yeah we'll just roll with it for now yep (laughs) all right micah 11 on legitimately feel bad for letting that letting the word stupid slip (laughs) into there when i was talking about like my favorite thing that we've been doing on this show for the last year Ooh, real quick in the middle of the episode why don't you plug what you're doing this weekend Oh, I mean, I'm going to plug it in the description, so it's okay. Everybody's already read it. Uh, Me and Mac and both of our wives and one of our sisters are going down to Austin. Oh, is Uh, Sam going down there? Yeah, Sam's going. It's going to be pretty fun. I'm going going down to Austin. I'm going to now. (laughs) (laughs) Sam's going, I'm going. (laughs) Uh, uh, We're going down to Austin, Texas for the Consulates Cup. Uh, Look for Dark Circle Sumo's youtube facebook and twitch i think are the three platforms they're streaming on uh but darkcirclesumo.com uh dark circle is the austin texas sumo club and uh they're putting on literally the one of the top three biggest amateur sumo events of the year uh awesome. the only the only bigger amateur sumo events uh in in the u.s right now this year are nationals and uh i guess the the, the u.s, US sumo open, open? yeah, yeah. Which I, I've been having a, a, a real a, a real tough time figuring out how how do I watch that? That's that's next weekend. The Consulates oh, really? Cup is this weekend. The U.S. Open is next weekend. But only one of those is like advertising how to watch it, how to do anything with it, and and like hmm. the Consulates Cup, which I mean I'm gonna be at it. I don't need to stream that one. Like <laughs> I, <laughs> I want other people to, but like I also want to do the yeah whatever. Okay, beside the point. Move on, move on with this. Uh, you find the link in the description for this episode. It's there. <laughs> All right, come on, get out of here. Sorry, my cat. I'm sorry. Should I should I talk about amateur sumo more while you deal with your feline? No, problems? my my cat wanted to leave the room, but he also didn't want to put in the effort that it took to open the already ajar kitty door in the baby gate. He also didn't want to jump over the baby gate. So I had to pick him up and heartily toss him over the gate. So he would stop meowing at the door like the little dick that he is. I I don't get that. Cats would absolutely rather be thrown than do any work. (laughs) Yes. I don't Absolutely. All right. Uh, Micah Shear 11 on the west side. Chio Tairyu is dropping a rank and a half after a six and nine record from Micah Shear at 10. So I, I get Takanosho being ranked ahead of Ryuden. I'm kind of less unsure about Chio Tairyu getting the benefit of being ranked ahead of Ryuden. Ryuden was 12 and three from Jurio one. Chio Tairyu six and nine from Micah Shear at 10. By the math, Ryuden deserved to be four ranks higher than Chio Tairyu, which easily clears our previously established two-rank rule for Jurio Rikshi being ranked ahead of a Makauchi Rikshi, but maybe that only works for, like, my guess year 13, 14, and lower. Maybe if you are going up against a Rikshi that was previously ranked, like, my guess year 12 and above, you gotta, you gotta clear them by a higher bar in order to uh, pass them. Uh, so, sure. I, I don't know what's going on there, but yeah, apparently... It's a lot harder to pass a Maigashira 10 if you're a Jiria Rikshi than if you're a uh, Maigashira like 16, 17. Well, uh, what's, then, the, what's the rule for Jiria? Be a dick. Or, sorry, go. fuck him. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Are we officially R rated because we got three F bombs in this episode? I've got a punishment coming up in a couple of, well, on the Bonske preview that has a couple of them in there so i figured out why not we'll do it on this episode too (laughs) so you're saying you got a punishment coming up so it's in your interest to have as few people listening as possible so we should probably (laughs) we should probably drop as many f-bombs as we can give you like a week warning tune out for the punishment (laughs) that's the not gonna episode right that's when you'll have it ready yeah oh it's it's already ready Ooh. okay yeah it, it it it's done, but you're you're not you're gonna have to wait for the preview episode to be forced to listen to it. Yeah, I mean even... you can't get around it. People can skip past it. You can't. You have to listen. 
I will I will carry this cross <laughs> if I must. All right. Let's see if we can get through the rest of these ranks. Magashira 12 <laughs> on the east side. We've got Oki no Umi uh, dropping five ranks to Magashira 12 after a 4 and 11 record. Once again, notably ahead of Ryuden, who Oki no Umi deserves to be five ranks lower than Ryuden, and he's still ranked ahead of him. Uh, but then at Magashira 12 West, we do get to Ryuden. He is rising five ranks after his 12 and 3 Yusho winning performance from Jurio 1. Uh, Maigashira 13 on the east side, we have Ichi Yamamoto, another snub of the Bonsuke candidate for me. So Ichi Yamamoto, if you remember the preview episode, was a guy that I said I was struggling with the most on the Bonsuke prediction. Luckily, I didn't go too crazy like some people I noted. I know some people had him up at like Maigashira 7, where guess the Bonsuke doesn't matter how big you miss it. It all counts the same. But uh, still, some people had him all the way up at like Maigashira 7. I only had him going up to Maigashira 10. But he had a 6-2 and two record, didn't get to 8 wins or 8 losses, so they held his spot on the Bonds K. So just like Kota Nawaka, he has to see all that great effort he put in the first week of the Nagoya Basho go to waste and try again from this rank yeah. in Aki. Like you said before, it's, it's, it's fair when you look at the Bonds K as a whole. But yeah. for individuals, sucks. Yeah, some individuals. It sucks. Yeah. Uh, Magashira 13 on the west side, we have Oho rising two ranks after an eight and seven record from Magashira 15. This is a career high rank for Oho. Uh, Magashira 14 on the east side, we have Chiyo Shoma dropping one rank after a seven and eight record for Magashira 13. He is the 37th Rikshi to be placed on this Bonske and the first one to be placed perfectly based on the typical math that we use <laughs> for Bonskes. <laughs> 37 out of 42 <laughs> outside of Sanyaku. Outside, okay, fine. Yeah. Outside of Sanyaku. <laughs> the rules are different up there. Yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah. But yeah, notably 37th on the guy, first 37th on the Bonsuke, first guy to be placed properly according to how you would usually suspect it to be done. Got it. I'm with you now. Magashira 14 on the west side. Yutakayama have him rising two ranks after an 8-7 and seven record for Magashira 16. At Magashira 15 on the east side, Terutsu Yoshi dropping three ranks after a 6-9 and nine record for Magashira 12. Uh, and then we get to Magashira 15 west. This is the aforementioned Tsudugi show. He is the reason that I believe Fusen losses uh, from when Rikshi were pulled for COVID had to count against them. Without that Fusen loss, Tsudugisha would have been five and seven. Based on how other all other Rikshi without eight wins or losses were treated, he would have had his rank frozen at Maigashira 14, um, which is what I predicted to happen for him. But if the COVID loss counts, the COVID Fusen loss counts against him, then he is left with a five and eight record. His absences are treated as wins, and he has an effective seven and eight record, which would make perfect sense for the drop that he received on this Bonds K. So not counting the Fusen uh, loss okay. against yeah, so not counting the Fusen loss against the Rikshi makes sense when we're discussing Endo. Uh, but counting the Fusen loss against the Rikshi makes sense when we're discussing Tsudagisho. I know I'm not breaking new ground here. There seems to be a few inconsistencies going on. <laughs> justice for Wakamoto Haru. There's something fishy. Justice for Wakamoto Haru. <laughs> Magashira 16. This is the lowest rank on the Bonds K. We're saying, or, or I was going to say Au Revoir. What's the, or it's like Italian or French for goodbye. Oh, buddy. Or, or is it, is that hello? <laughs> <laughs> Notably, sure, somebody that sure is. I'm sure you're looking for Au Wiedersehen, which is Russian for hello. <laughs> <laughs> Au Revoir. I can't even pronounce it. You know the word I'm like thinking of, though, right? Yeah, Au but revoir. I'm not gonna like tell you. Well, I not. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you actually got it. You're you're pretty close, and it's French for goodbye is what you're looking for. Oh, okay. So that's an, a you're you're, you're pretty close. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, you're okay. So yeah, we're gonna say goodbye to the Magashira <laughs> 17 rank uh, because we have created those two new Sanyaku ranks. Um. But so at Magashira 16 on the east side, we have Mitoryu, who will be making his long anticipated Makuuchi debut after his six and nine record from Jurio 4. He started his career with four Basho in Makushita. He was a Makushita Tsukedashi, and then he was in Jurio for four and a half straight years, never once dropping down to Makushita or rising up to Makuuchi in all that time. Just 
perfectly placed in Jurio, never going above or below that for four and a half years until now. And then at Maegashiro 16, on the west side, we have Hira Do Umi. He will be making his Makauchi debut as well after a 10-5 and five record from Jurio 8. Uh, Hira Do Umi, I have as a Luck of the Bonds K candidate, eight-ranked jump from Jurio 8 to get to Makauchi. Pretty dang good. So despite being six years younger than Mitoriu, Mitoriu is 28, Hira Do Umi is 22, Hira de Umi has actually been in Grand Sumo one year longer than me toward you. Oh, did he start at the bottom? Like like straight he, out of high school? He started at the bottom as a 16-year-old. Me oh, you started okay. in Makushta as like a 24, 25, 23, one of those. One of those three, I'm <laughs> fairly confident. <laughs> so Neither of these guys had a record that you would typically expect to see a promotion into the Makauchi division for, but that just shows you how strong the demotion cases were for the three Rikshi that dropped to Jurio. They Those... were not ambiguous. Yeah. Those three being Shima Naomi, who had a 1-14 in record from Maegashira 9, Dayamami, who had a 2 and, well, I guess effectively would have been a 5-10 and record once you take covid losses into account um or maybe like four and eleven but whatever four and eleven from my 16 obviously <laughs> need to be demoted and then a six and nine from shiomaru for my 17 absolutely needed to be demoted so very lucky cases for me toward you and especially hira to umi to make it up into the top division this basho so yeah. let's take a look at how i did on guess the bonske uh i think diamami kind of shatters your case for your rules Diamami had uh, absences that weren't COVID absences at the beginning of the Basho. Oh, okay. Nope, never mind. Yep. Yeah, because because if he was, he's two nine and four officially. So if he was two and eight in the ring, he would have been treated as like seven and eight. Yeah, seven and eight. If it was a COVID, but this that was a legit injury. He had he had like okay, two. I had forgotten that. Two missed days for legit injury and then two missed days for COVID absence. Okay. So it seems like they just treated it like regular absences and just treated him like he got a two and 13. Well, we, whether he got like a five and effectively five and 10, even if he had effectively a six and nine, which he wouldn't. Well, either he would way, still he would have gone down, but he didn't go down like to Jurio one. He went down to Jurio eight. So like yeah. he, he got a, substantial demotion so like yeah Absolutely. but yeah you're right i i guess i had forgotten that he had a legit injury thing going on yep so let's let's take a look at how i did and guess the bonds k so i got we didn't really track it as we went through this prediction which is fine but i got uh mm-hmm. 20 uh exact correct prediction so as kind of doom and gloom as i was i still got 20 exactly right out of a possible 42 so that's 48 percent. my previous best uh was the last basho actually where i had gotten 79 percent exact right prediction so a big drop you, off you from murdered last the time. last one and yeah. this one is like a complete a, a complete dumpster fire of a bonds case. yeah so like yeah it, there's not a whole lot we can take from this but i think uh i i am excited to see how you ranked relatively yeah uh We'll get there. So I had five in addition at the correct rank, but they were on the wrong east west side. So that's a total total of 25 at the correct rank, 60%. My previous best, 88%. Once again, significant drop off from where my best. Uh in comparison, so I had 25 at the correct rank, 33 at the correct rank was the best in guess the bonds case. So that's eight more wow. than me. Uh, but 33, <laughs> 33 is pretty low for the best score in guess the bonds case. Yeah, so that that's kind like of, saying that a C plus is the best, the best score in the class. Yeah. And the person who had 33 was three ahead of the next highest person who had 30. Um, so wow. yeah, okay. not a whole lot of great scores going on it was on a, a just absolute garbage all around yep uh so where i ranked overall on this one uh ended up tied for 30th out of 116 and uh one of the people i was tied at 30th with is a friend of the show i will say uh tim sumo a uh, fun guy to talk with on twitter uh so me and him tied on bonske this time a pretty solid GS peep, you might say. Very solid GS peep. Um, <laughs> but after that tied for 30th performance, my overall rank in Guess the Bonske went from 
fifth overall to third overall. Oh dang! Because um, I I have I have some beef. Uh, there were four uh contestants in Guess the Bonds K that are in the top ten that did not fill out a Bonds K or entry for this Bonds K. And I looked at the rules at the bottom of the Guess the Bonds K because I really didn't pay attention. Uh for what happens if you miss a Basho. The first Basho has no effect on your ranking points. So you can kind of miss one what? and be safe. So a couple of people did the the strategic Qjo. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to call anybody out by name. You know who you are, but I'm watching you. I mean, I'd like you to call them out by name. We're, we're going to avoid that. People can, <laughs> pe- people can easily look it up themselves. And I'm, I'm not all that mad. I just like- Stir the pot. Stir the pot. <laughs> You're just kind of <laughs> playing it safe here with your ranking. And I'm just saying, real men, see what happens? I competed, and I rose up to number three in the world. <laughs> just due to sheer chutzpah. <laughs> yeah, just, yep. Love it. Yeah. Um, if we take a look at it from how we scored the Bonske, just kind of how many you missed people Missed Rickshie's spot in the overall order, just like a cumulative score of that. My total misses was 46. Um, my previous Basho, I had missed a total of 12. Um, <laughs> yeah. So taking a look at that for overall standing or like my overall predictions in the past, this is like my third or fourth worst ever. Yeah. Um, and Let's see. And the the yeah, way that it's... we score it ourselves is not guess the bonds case style. We yeah. And and I mean, like you could you could look at it from whatever whatever way you want. But the way that we score it, just from like as objective a standpoint as possible, is just what's the order? What's the yeah. order of all forty two guys? And of all forty two guys, you missed forty six total slots. Yeah. Say Endo is the eighteenth Rikshi in the order. I predicted him to be the twenty third Rikshi in the order. That's a miss five. of five. So yeah, we take all of those cumulative misses, add them up. And so I got a score of forty six on this one. That score of forty six is my fourth worst prediction from all time. And that's basically since I've been doing guess the bonds K probably my, my worst like cumulative score uh one mm-hmm. that I've had. Um, because the prior three bad ones I had was before I was even doing guess the bonds. Yeah, form. yeah. I mean, or like, recording we're, we're these like, episodes. Exactly. We're talking like three years of stats and about two years of taking it seriously. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, on some level, like, yeah, they, like this is this is an outlier. There's a ton of weird stuff on this one. But yeah, like, and as bad as that was for me, we see how I did. Kind of overall, I was still well within the top half of guesses exactly. on this Bonske and not really all that far off from the people that did amazing. So just saying, if you start a, a podcast about sumo, record multiple times a month over the course of five years, you will learn more about sumo <laughs> wrestling. Yeah, absolutely. We've proven it. Yeah. Oh, at least three out of four of us have proven it. I'm not sold on Flarek yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I don't know. I'm not sure he's progressed. Just kidding. I... <laughs> Absolutely love that man. All right. Uh, real quick, <laughs> biggest jumpers up the Bonds K. Uh, Midori Fuji rose 10 ranks up the Bonds K. The next highest was Meisei and Hira de Umi rising eight ranks. The biggest drops down the Bonds K. Takanosho dropping down nine ranks. The next biggest drop was Oki no Umi with five ranks. Hmm. Uh, we have seven Rikshi that will be at their career high ranking Hoshoryu, Tobizaru, Midori Fuji, Nishiki Fuji, Oho, Mitoryu, and Hira do Umi. Two Rikshi making their Makauchi debut, Mit- Mitoryu and Hira do Umi. Snub of the Bonds case, we had Koto Nawaka, Ichi Yamamoto, Tsudu Gisho, and a late entry, Wakamoto Haru. Despite wanting justice for justice. Wakamoto Haru, I want justice for Koto Nawaka just a little bit more. So he is my official snub of the Bonske. Luck yeah, of the going, Bonske. Going seven and three and not getting promoted. Yeah. A bummer. A bummer yeah. for sure. Uh, luck of the Bonske. We had a bunch of them. It's going to Takara Fuji. Justice for Wakamoto Haru. <laughs> yep. That, enough said. Yep. Uh, just tracking what Jake thought my worst predictions were going to be from the preview episode. He said, uh, we actually both kind of came to mutual agreements. These were the trouble spots to look out for. Yeah. Uh, not freezing Koto Nawaka and Ichi Yamamoto, who did not have eight wins prior to pulling out. Yep, we should have done that. Uh, putting Ryuden ahead of Takanosho. 
Yeah, we should have reversed that. Should have put Takanosho ahead of Ryuden. Uh, Tamawashi and Sudukisho uh, getting demoted instead of being held in place. Half right. Tamawashi was held in place. Sudukisho was demoted. Uh, so most of the stuff we thought I probably got wrong, I got wrong. Maybe we should listen to us more. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that is exactly the way I would have put it. <laughs> yeah. I, I sit here listening to you ramble on about stats that you've studied. But hey, maybe you should listen to me more. Yeah. <laughs> so if you are a GSP and you enjoy no. this podcast, you can leave us a five star review on Apple oh. Podcasts. It's a, a funny glitch in the system. It actually only lets you put in five star reviews. Don't don't try putting in anything else. You'll just don't get a virus. Yeah. You'll get a virus on your computer. So just go to Apple Podcasts <laughs> or your favorite podcast listening service, hit five stars, avoid that virus. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to like show up in the, in the in like the the store and see a glitch in the matrix that says teeth paste. Yeah, <laughs> in the in the toiletry <laughs> section. If you want to avoid that, the only way to do that is to follow us on social media: Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. <laughs> Become one of the GS peeps. Uh, <laughs> find us on Patreon. <laughs> GrandSumoBreakdown.wordpress.com. Uh, oh, by the way, go there, uh, especially for our Sumo newsletter. Uh, mm. We've started doing that uh, every even number month. So every non-Basho month, I've been doing a newsletter for the last couple, two opportunities. <laughs> yes. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> also, as we mentioned, and as you can see in the description, the Consulates Cup, one of the biggest amateur sumo wrestling events in the entire country, will be coming up this weekend, this Saturday. So look for Dark Circle Sumo on uh, on social media if you want to watch that this Saturday. Grand Sumo Breakdown will be in attendance, as will Sumo Kaboom, as will Sumo Punks, as will some other podcasts that I, I can't remember the name of, but some, I don't know, so, something with Sumo Sake, something like that. I don't remember for sure. Doesn't ring any bells. Doesn't ring any bells for me. Uh, I'm just reading off a script. Um, <laughs> If you if you want to leave us a voicemail uh, about how you are you are a prime GS peep, that would be 805-613-7866. 805-613-SUMO. That's right. So the Aki preview will come out sometime next week. The the hotly anticipated Ryan musical punishment uh will be coming out then. You do not want to miss it. Uh and the Basho proper will start Sunday, September eleventh. Uh, we are Intai Links. Thank you for listening to Grand Sumo Breakdown. Until next time, throw your salt high and keep moving forward. <laughs>